for questions. I mean, Toby, uh, two days, I mean, two games into being a Deke, how do you, how would you evaluate your decision to transfer so far? Oh, I knew after game one, it was the right decision. Honestly, before that, um, but 100% the right decision to make. Um, you know, the level that we're playing at, the cohesion that we have, this was 100% the right school for me. Um, and I'm glad I made that decision. All right, so why did you change your jersey like what a week before the opener yeah it actually came up um two days before so i was originally planning on wearing two this year but um there's a situation on punt safe where me and taylor moran could be on the field at the same time so had to take the l change the zero and i i like it a lot it's grown on me a lot so i don't mind it at all did it factor into your decision at all that now both turners on the team wear number zero you know i didn't think about it that until it happened but it's definitely really cool so before every game I come up to um to CT and I'm like what's up zero and he's like what's up zero so it's really cool um my parents had a, a interesting moment with his parents because they saw the zero and the turner and they're like how did they get the shirts that fast um but obviously it was Christian and his family so really cool stuff though Kobe, just what are you seeing from the Liberty offense that they have you guys uh, working on this week? Yeah, so um, I have a lot of respect for this offense. I have a lot of respect for this offensive line. They play very, very hard um, and they're physical. You know, it's definitely the best O-line that we've seen to date. Um, and, you know, the thing that stands out right away is how hard they play. So I have a lot of respect for them in that um, and it's definitely going to be our toughest challenge in that area and the quarterback poses a similar challenge um, to our quarterback from last week from Vanderbilt you know he has feet um, and he can you know get away but he also is able to extend plays he's still looking downfield to um, make big throws after he escapes out of the pocket so um, a similar game plan as far as you know managing the quarterback but he um, is a little bit more explosive in that he um, finds escape lanes to throw the ball to so they have a lot of really good skill players as well. Their running back position um, is really good. And they have some receivers who are also really good. So, you know, all around a really good team. And they're coming in with the mindset to, you know, take us off of where we're at. And, you know, at the end of the day, the coaches put us in, you know, the, the best position um, that they can, you know, for us to go out and execute. So it comes down to what we do. It comes down to us following the game plan that we're given and how well we execute that is going to be how well we execute in the game. Kobe, I'm not trying to take anything away from you here, but it looked like the fumble recovery you had against Vanderbilt, the ball just kind of popped into your lap there. Uh, in a game with those kind of conditions, do you, as a defense, do you guys get like a little extra amped up because you know the ball is going to be a little loose and a little harder to hold on to? Oh, for sure. You know, whenever it's a rainy game, it's a defensive game. Um, and, you know, things are going to get a little grimy. Um, slippery and you know they also didn't hold on to the ball super well they carried the ball a little loose um, and so we knew going in that that was going to be an opportunity for us to capitalize off of turnovers and so JJ had a good turnover um, Kobe had a good pick six um, but yeah in that case you know if they're going to just drop the ball in front of me I'll definitely pick it up <laughs> you got to clean up a sack too mm-hmm JD was looking out for me a little bit on that one, so I don't mind. <laughs> uh, Toby, kind of I know. Um, I know at defensive tackle isn't necessarily the uh, most glamorous of positions, so I guess how do you balance that in kind of a year that you're trying to? This is kind of your money year, getting trying to get to the NFL. How do you balance that with you know, kind of Dave Cape Cohen's really monitor of, you know, sacks and tackles don't really tell the full story of what the defensive line is doing. Yeah, so um, I know that the guys at the next level, they know exactly what they're looking for in D tackles. And, you know, um, a lot of that is production. You know, obviously you want to be productive, but also they understand if you're getting clogged up, if you have double teams, if you have a lot of people on you. Um, you know, from what I understand, they're trying to see you work and, and how well you keep fighting. And so 
Um, this year really isn't a huge year for me to try to go and capitalize on stats. You know, if I get stats, I'm grateful for it. And obviously that's what I'm, you know, that's a thing that I'm working toward as well, but it's me fitting into the scheme, whatever the coaches need me to do, however I can better help this defense, um, win football games. And, you know, I know that that'll translate well at the next level as well. Kobe, any big surprises about making the transition to Wake Forest? Anything where you said, whoa, I didn't expect that? Hmm. Um, I don't think so. You know, Coach Clawson was very straightforward in the recruiting process about exactly what to expect um, and about what his emphasis were. And, you know, the, there wasn't really too much that um, blindsided me. You know, it was pretty much exactly what they said it would be like. Um, but I will say one of the things that I noticed, you know, while I was taking my visit here and that still kind of uh, blindsided me a little bit was just how hard, hard this team works um, and how, you know, unified we really are. Um, this is a team that throughout the summer was constantly going in and, and getting extra work. Um, and whenever you didn't know where to find somebody, you go into the indoor and you see a bunch of people there. So that was something that blindsided me a little bit in a good way. Um, but definitely happy to be a part of this team. Anything about the school, school work the situation there? You know, they kept it real with that part too. Um, and coming from Richmond, it's a very similar school. Um, you know, it's a private school, small classes, um, tedious classwork. Um, and they're going to really work you to make you the best student that you can be. So I kind of understood that too, coming from, from Richmond, but it's, you know, it's, it's very similar. Thanks. There's some guys who it's their second year as transfers into the program and they're really doing a lot better than they did last year, like Malik and Isaiah, Christian Turner. Um, you you obviously don't fit in, into that category. Uh, do you think coming in in the spring really kind of has helped that transition? I know it's probably kind of obvious, but do you think that's why it's been such a smooth transition for you? 100%, you know, coming in the spring um, gave me an opportunity to go through through the entire offseason phase with the team. Um, and so I wasn't just coming in, you know, at camp, not really knowing who anybody was. I got to fully, you know, get a gist of who everybody was and work my way up and kind of, you know, prove myself. Um, but also a big part of my transition goes back again to the guys and the culture that's been established here by Coach Clawson and, and by these players, you know, they took me in right away. Um, and showed me the ropes and, you know, showed me what I needed to do and, and how to do it the Deacon way. And so, um, again, you know, a big part of that whole transition piece goes back to the guys and, and how well they've been with me. Kobe, with, uh, with Malik, is there a bit of extra, like, um, significance when you see him doing well and kind of vice versa when he sees you doing well? Mm -hmm. Say that again, sorry. I couldn't hear that one. I was like, just with Malik, is there, is there just kind of an extra, like, sort of, like, um, for, like, to get a little bit more extra joy seeing, like, a fellow Richmond transfer kind of doing well um, coming Oh, 100 percent. And that's my brother. Um, and, you know, every time he makes a big play, I'm over there celebrating with him. Every time I make a big play, he's over there celebrating with me. And, you know, before a lot of these games, it's like, you know, reminding each other, this is what we came here for. You know, we came here to play big-time football um, with a big-time team. And, you know, seeing us both play well so far is, has been really great for me. Anything else? Why did it take you an extra year to join Malik? Um, you know, I still had a lot of unfinished business there at Richmond. Um, and, you know, I wasn't ready to leave at all. You know, that, that was my home. Um, and, you know, I feel like after last year, I was ready to make that decision, you know, either to go to the draft or, or to go somewhere else. Um, I feel like I did everything that I could do for, for that school and for that program. So, you know, it, it felt right. And getting my degree, too. <laughs> Thanks, Kobe. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Kobe. All right, guys, questions from Alec? Uh, Malik, I mean, what's it like being healthy again? <laughs> uh, this is definitely a good feeling. Uh, eight months ago, I was in a really dark place, you know, going through an ACL injury. Obviously, it's a tough thing. You never know how you're going to bounce back from that. But, you know, when the news happened, I mean, you know, the guys got me in fast with the surgery. And I told myself, 
I got to put my head down and work. You know, I can't go about my day just moping around and, you know, just dreading the fact that, you know, the process sucks, but I just took it as an opportunity to get better. And I feel like that helped me get better as a person, not just as a football player. And it really taught me some things and it really developed my character. And I feel I feel like I came back stronger from it. So it's definitely a nice feeling. Now I'm just goal is to now stay healthy and just contribute to the team winning. Felt yourself hesitant with with your footing or with, with your feeling in your name? Sorry, what was that? Have you felt yourself hesitant at all with, with like how how your knee feels coming off the ACL? Uh, I mean, at first, like yeah, I definitely thought about it, but once that that whistle blew, I was I was locked and ready to go. Like you know, I don't even be, I don't even think about it. To be honest, you know, like whether after the game I get it treated or where put some ice on it, but like when I'm in between the white lines, I'm full go. I'm just playing, I'm just playing football. Malik, you talked about not moping and getting right into the rehab and and hitting that strong. How long did it take you mentally to kind of turn the page away from that moping period, which I'm sure at least lasted a handful of days, right? And then what was the key to you making such a rapid recovery? Uh, well, I'm not going to lie. It was uh, the surgery happened the weekend before, um, first day of classes for the, for the second semester. So that first day of classes was, was my moping day. After that, I, I talked to the staff. I was like, hey, I apologize. Like, this isn't going to be my mindset for this whole thing. So, you know, that I definitely had. And even if I had those days, I tried not to, you know, carry around that to, you know, like outside and around my teammates and around the coaches. I tried to almost kind of put on a front, you know, and like, you know, there was definitely times where I was by myself and I would have those those moments. But talking to my family and, you know, those good people in my corner um, will really, really help me along this process. So, and I would say really the key for me for like the rapid recovery was really like the staff and my mindset, because I told the staff, like, this is, this is something I'm going to attack. Like I'm going to, I'm going to do my absolute best. You're going to get the best out of me. I'm asking just to get the best out of you guys. So they just matched my energy, they matched my attitude, they matched my effort, and it was a collective effort. And, you know, I couldn't thank them more enough because now I feel like I'm back to, or even even better than I thought I was. So I really, I really have to thank the staff for that, for the, for the rapid recovery. Yeah, how would you assess your play through the first couple of games, Malik? Because I would say probably to, to most of us, it seems like you're, you're flying all over the field and, and making big hits. Yeah, I mean, I would say um, just having that break, like, you know, not doing spring ball, I feel like I was able to develop my game, not just physically, but I was able to develop it in, in the film room and, you know, try to get that that upper, that upper level of uh, football IQ. So I really tried to, you know, get in with the coaches, you know, get with my teammates, you know, just try to develop my game in other aspects if I wasn't really physically out there with the team, getting the reps. So I really had to take that serious because when I'm when I was cleared to play, I had to, you know, not miss a beat. So I really feel like um the way I've been playing these past two games is just a res a result of what I put in throughout the off season. Malik, it seems like every time David Clawson talks about special teams and you know how much he values them, your name is one of the first names out of his mouth. <laughs> what makes you such a good special teams player? I mean, what makes you want to run as fast as you can to hit as hard as you can or be hit as hard as somebody else can, knowing that that's right around the corner too? What's the frame of mind going through that? I mean, I'm just trying to go down and feel like a missile, man. Like, <laughs> that's just... Like even last year when I really wasn't getting the defensive reps when I was kind of getting eased into the to the line of the rotation, that was that was my my game day plan. Like, you know, I'm gonna fly down the field and I'm gonna try to either knock someone out as hard as possible, get the ball, like you know, because that that brings a certain energy to the team and a kind of sense of morale, like, okay, this guy takes it serious. And I feel like that was an outcome, but that was a result of me getting 
the opportunity to play more, like just put in effort towards that. Cause it, it's, it's definitely a game changer. We see it all the time in college football and how it affects the game. So I feel like taking pride in that is, is something I'm going to continue to carry on because, and at the end of the day, I just like hitting people. So um, I, I think it's pretty fun. <laughs> I like that. At the end of the day, I just feel like hitting people. Um, and then doing that leads to more reps in the backfield as well. They notice that the coaches. Yes, sir. Definitely. I even try to emphasize that to the young guys as well. That's an opportunity. And, you know, you only get so many, whether it's limited or a lot. So, and even with guys that, you know, you never know if it's your last play either. And I was able, I was able to experience to that when I tore my ACL on the Rutgers game, you never know what could possibly happen. So you always got to play, got to play every snap, like it's your last. So I try to take as much pride in that as, as possible and, you know, never take anything for granted in that aspect, so. Malik, I don't remember you. Malik. Uh, I don't remember you getting stretchered off or anything during the Rutgers game. Was that an injury that you didn't realize how bad it was until it happened or until after the fact? Oh, not at all. I didn't know what happened. I just thought, oh, it just felt weird. I was going to go back in the game, but they shut me down at halftime. And I was, I mean, I'm not, when we won the game, I, I made a TikTok afterwards with my friends. I, with, I, I was moving around, dancing around fine. But I, uh, when I got home, I was like, oh, this thing kind of hurt a little bit. But I was I was excited that we just won a, a bowl game. So, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then obviously, like, you know, I just got, uh, drove to Winston from Charlotte. When I got back home, I drove to Winston and uh, got the MRI. And then that's when everything happened. But, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I was about to go back in the game. I was like, "Okay, y'all go give me a, a knee sleeve, a brace, and I or I go back in." But yeah, it was it was crazy. It was crazy that that happened. Did that make the diagnosis like harder to digest and almost like unbelievable to an extent because you were moving on it? Yeah. Also, it was just like I, I also kind of had like a deep feeling, like the worst possible thing. Like deep down, I kind of felt some side way because as I was moving, I, once, I, once the adrenaline was gone and all that stuff is just like, okay, this kind of hurts a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, like deep down, I kind of felt like, I, okay, maybe I did kind of mess this up. And even looking back at the video, it didn't look like a pretty angle. But, you know, it was unfortunate, but, you know, here's what it is. Malik, uh, it feels like there's been a lot of just change in the safeties room, whether it's Nas and uh, Zion leaving, you get Chalen back from an injury, you're coming back from an injury, Evan and Nick are in and out with injuries. But you also have James Adams as a new safeties coach. I mean, how has he kind of helped the shuffling around um, bringing in a new guy like Brendan Harris? Like what like what have the new like additions with like him and Brendan Harris really added to the room? Yeah, I just <laughs> feel like our our mindset has kind of changed and our our energy has been fueled in the like performing to our best like I feel like he really elevated our games in different ways like even though I wasn't getting the reps with him I felt like he was still able to coach me to to, to become a better football player and I just seen it in the way he's taught us new techniques and the way he breaks down film with us and the way he's just like a people's person like he really he really just doesn't you know try to coach he really tries to create a bond with it each and every one of his guys and I feel like that person being there showing that he cares for us and more than just football, I, I feel like it builds a certain trust within our unit and it and it elevates our game as a whole. And us able to fly around and make plays is, is a result of like really him and how he's been able to come in and, you know, buy into the culture that we set here and also being able to, you know, put our trust in his hands as well. So I definitely feel like the addition of him and even Brandon coming in, you know, coming into a new system and us being able to welcome him in and, you know, just try to come together. I feel like everyone is able to buy in and really perform to the best of their ability. So I really uh, appreciate Coach Adams as a, as a coach and a person for sure. Malik, what was your version or what did you see on the play, which ended up being the pick six for Kobe? If I remember correctly, you were one of the trio of Deeks that were getting uh, pressure on on the quarterback. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. 
So, you know, it was it was something that we drew up that week and it hit and it, it came free. So I got we got good pressure on him. I try to make sure I just secured him, whether he, I didn't know he even threw the ball. I was like, oh, sure, I got a sack. Then I get up and I was like, oh, Brandon tipped it. I thought he had to pay. He tipped it. Kobe got it in his hands. So I was scrambling to get up and just trying to find someone to block because as soon as I seen him switch fields, I was trying to make sure no one was able to touch him. So he got in the end zone. So there was just like a surreal moment. It was crazy. And I feel like that was a big momentum shift in the game, like for it to for it to hit like that. So it was it was definitely a pretty awesome feeling. Now, like, I mean, this time last year, the defense also still looked pretty good, but then, you know, things kind of got inconsistent. What's going to be the key for you guys really to keep on doing what you're doing? I mean, you guys are never going to be a, ever be a team that's going to not give up um, some points, like, I guess, with the speed of the offense. But, like, what's going to keep you guys consistent, like, over the next five, six, seven, eight games? <laughs> I feel like the main thing that Coach Clausen and even Coach Lambert really emphasizes is our, our attitude and our effort. Um, obviously, these first two games, yeah, we played, you know, VMI first game, Vanderbilt SEC team. But – you know, the key to that is really not to get complacent. Like we we hit it off pretty strong last year and we see that 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 you know we start to dip a little bit. And I feel like, you know, everyone just needs to, you know, just don't develop any bad habits, whether that's on the field or off the field type issues. I feel like everyone just need, needs to just put our put our heads down and really just buy into what we're trying to achieve. Cause um Lambert really always emphasizes representing that jersey and you know our mindset and that whole aspect we just really need to really just need to uh put in our best effort and control our attitude and we'll be able to reach really high places once we do that and just be be consistent on a daily basis so anything else guys thanks Mal. thanks guys see you appreciate it awesome